two of virtual coffee in a car. So I'm really happy to be with you here today and I have a fun card to share with you. I'm moving this set out of the way. This is called Snailed It. And the reason I have it here is that it also coordinates with this punch. So it's quite a nice little stamp set to have. So if you're getting this one anyway, or if you already have it, this one is also awesome. There is an other one that's the, it's called Punch Party, and it's a free stamp set that you can get if you have a, um, a $375 workshop. But let's get started. So today, this is the card. Okay, isn't it pretty? So what we're using again is So Saffron, Pool Party, Calypso Coral, and Whisper White Thick. Um, I'm also using some blends, Granny Apple Green and Calypso Coral, the punch, and the scripty embossing folder. It just, it's hiding under my paper. It's right here. And I thought the scripty embossing folder was the perfect fit to go with posted for you because it's like the handwriting in a letter. So let us get started. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to try to keep everything nice and neat. Someday I'm going to get really good at this. Um, good morning, Caroline. Nice to see you. So those are the colors we're using. Calypso Coral and So Saffron and Memento Black, which is here. And a little trick with the Memento is when you get your Memento ink pad, put the date on the back of it. Because I find that a Memento, hello, Enika. Yes, it called the Hail of Phanatite and Nadalons. Yes, Enika just asked me if I had a nice time in Holland, and I certainly did. It seems like a long, long time ago. I miss Gerard very much. And we're trying really hard to get him to come here. So let's start with the Whisper White. This is Whisper White Thick, and that's now called Basic White because the company that made Whisper White went out of business due to COVID. So that's pretty sad. So this is an eight and a half by 11, and I'm gonna score it at five and a half, okay? And you just wanna make sure your cardstock is tight up against that end. You wanna use the light gray blade, and then, oh, you can, it's okay, Inika, yeah, it's nice. So many Dutch people, they're so smart. They are multilingual, yeah. So now we have two cards. I always score once and cut once and get two cards. It's just way easier. And then I have an extra one all ready to go when I need it. And so you can either use a bone folder to get a nice crisp fold, or I've discovered that you can just use a block, which is really nice too. So here's our base. The next piece is this, and it's pool party. It's three and a half by five. Let me double check that. So you can either work along with me or you can order. Yeah, it's three and a half by five. And, uh, or you can order a kit. It's for $25, you get a kit with everything in it. So, and that includes postage, okay? So here we go. I'm just laying that on fairly, trying to keep it straight in there. And now I'm going to get my die cutting machine. And because this is a, um, a thick embossing folder, I need the gray plate. And I am desperately looking around to see if I have it laying here, but of course I do not. So give me one second. And I'm going to go and grab that. So when you have a thick embossing folder, you want to use just this plate and the platform. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to tip it. And hopefully I'll remember to tip it back again. And then you should always put your folders in with the, the hinge side first. Okay. And then we'll just roll it through. Nice, satisfying clunk. And let's have a look. Oh, now I have to remember to tip it back because I think the last time I didn't do that. So here we have it, and I don't know how well it shows. Rotate device, it says. Have I going sideways? All right, let me know, guys, if things are looking wonky because my, my phone is saying rotate device, and I'm really hoping that everything is still going well. So this is the next step. I have my foot card folded, but I've already lost it. So here we go. We're going to put this on the card, all right? I have my stamp and seal. <clears throat> oh, it's looking good. Okay, great, good. My phone was talking to me and it was scaring me. 
Hi, Andrea. You know, I should have given you a card kit before you left, Andrea. I'm sorry. I didn't think of it. That way you could have played along. All right. So you just kind of want to make sure your corners are good. And then down it goes. All right. So let's take a look at the card. The next thing we're going to do is make our elements. Okay. What I love about this stamp set is that with the punch, it's just so easy. So we're going to take a piece of so saffron. That looks so bright. Yeah, that is so saffron. I thought so saffron was a light color. All right, and we're going to use the birds on the so saffron and the flowers on the calypso coral and then this one on the white. I'm actually using thick white because I have a scrap of it left over. So I thought we might as well just use that. All right, let's start with. Here we go. And then just put that on the block like this. Tap, tap, tap. And a little. make sure you go a little bit away from the corner because you need to leave room for the punch. See, so then the punch, the punch has this tab on the back that locks it so that it stores flat. If you push the punch like that, that opens it up. All right, and always hold your punch upside down. Slide your paper in and then kind of eyeball it. And when it looks like it's straight, then you slowly clamp and then you can use two hands and do this. Okay, so that's our Calypso Coral one. And now we're going to do, oh, that's that's not Calypso Coral, that's so saffron. Yes, mm. got ahead of myself. Tap, tap. Actually, I'm going to do it this way so that their tone on tone stamping is very um, classy. It's subtle. It's pretty. And it allows you to use a few different colors without being overwhelmed. All right. So now we're going to use this one. Here we go. My blocks need a cleaning like, oh, my goodness. All right, I'm going to close my Calypso Coral, and then we're going to go to Memento. And with Memento, I do it differently. I, oh, see, there's a little fluffy on there. You know what? There's a tiny little white piece there. I'm going to clean that because I will not get a clean, crisp stamp if I don't do that. So I'll just give it a clean. That little white piece is now gone, so we're good. And then I'm just going to stamp off in case it's a bit damp. And here we go. Oh, yeah. So I take the ink pad and apply it like that instead of the other way around. So here we go. And then with your white, you do want to give it just a minute to dry. Um, our Whisper White is a bit of a princess and sometimes it smears if you stamp right away. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to stamp this one in Pool Party. And you know what? Guess what I forgot to grab? My Pool Party ink. So give me a second. You know what? The running back and forth to my ink pads is about the only exercise I'm getting these days besides walking. I'm starting to think that maybe I need to uh, start doing something online. Okay, now I think, I was guessing, I've got a one and three eighths inch punch. That's too big. So if you want a one and a quarter inch punch, good thing I grabbed both of them. It's hard to eyeball it. There we go. So we'll put that piece aside. So you can see this is very much a punchy card. Now we can cut this one out. Actually, you know what? Before we cut, we're going to color. So we're gonna take our Calypso Coral and our Granny Apple Green. So with the Granny Apple Green, this is the dark. I just like to trace the veins in the leaf, like so. And then I like to go over it with the light. And then I get all the contrast that I need. Oh, I forgot this one. And I'm going to try the broad. It's big enough. I do prefer blending with the, the brush if I can. But when you have a little tiny space to color in, then you do need to use the bullet point. I love blending. I'm trying to think if I, I'm trying to determine if I can set aside one day just for stamping. You know, when you do this as a business, there's so many things that you do that you don't often 
get to stamp just for fun and I'm kind of missing it. See, and now I'm not following my own advice and I'm using the brush tip on those little pieces. Um, oh, I was, you know, I'm looking at my own example. I was wondering if I did the stem in green or brown and I did it in green. So I'm going to use the bullet tip now and just do this. And I suppose stems are usually green. It's only branches that are brown. Oh, and look, there's also this bit of green right here. There. And now a little bit of Calypso Coral. I'm going to do a bit of dark. And again, I'm just doing it on these lines. And then I'll fill in with the light. And... You could take the color lifter, but it's true to Jackie's style, the color lifter is still in the holder, not on my desk, and I'm not going to make you wait again. So now I'm going to take the dark one. My uh, grammar is also slipping. I'm going to. I'm going to. Oh, goodness. There. Isn't that pretty? I know. The more I use this stamp set, the more I love it. And I was going to look, I know online our artisan design team did a blog hop featuring this set. So I would love to see what they did with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold it this way. And there. Now the last thing that we need to stamp is the um, sending love your way. So I wanna use the stamp apparatus for that. And I had, I had, notice that word had, a, I did have a strip of white that I had laid ready. But since, oh yeah, here it is. Oh my goodness, it came through. I'm going to put that on the top. And then I'm going to use this sending love your way. Just laying it on here. It doesn't really matter. I'll put it right at the end. And there we go. With the saying, it's really nice to use the Stamparatus because just in case it isn't dark enough, you can do it again. Well, mine does look quite nice. I don't think I need to do it again. Worked out just perfectly. Now I'm going to, I could, I could use scissors to trim this, but it's really important that it's perfectly straight. So I'm going to use my paper trimmer and then this part just has to be about like so, okay. All right, now it's time to build our card, what fun. So, here we go. Here's the card. I've got my own other card looking to see. We're gonna start with this one. You kind of lay it out. This is what I did when I was building the card. I took my pieces and like so in here. And then this part is going to be popped up and this part is also going to be popped up and it's going to just be like that. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive right on the end of this one. There. And then I'm going to put this like so. Then flip it. And I have my dimensionals right here. There. And there we go. And then one more at the end here. Okay. And we'll just take all our little backings off. And then, whoops, the last one is giving me some grief. All right. Now, I'm just going to slide those off a little bit. We're going to put this one on flat. Oops, advance the tape. And it's gonna go, these birds are so cute. Up like so, slight angle. This one's gonna be popped up. I think, you know what, I have, I'm making Italian coffee. I've got this little Italian coffee maker. That's how my mom has made coffee for the last 40 years, I think. She's never used a drip machine. She has one in case of a birthday party. And the only time that ever gets used is if I'm there 
but otherwise, no. And I understand now that her coffee is so good. And now my daughter, Rachel, and my daughter, Steph, are both making their coffee that way. I told my mom and she was like, oh, that's so nice. And I'm thinking, yeah, the traditions continue. It's the little things. And that will always be a story. Because I'm sure my kids, my grandkids are going to ask their moms, why do you make coffee that way? And they're going to say, well, a long time ago, my Oma made coffee that way, and she made the best coffee. See, and now this is just going to go like so. It can go a little bit higher, I suppose. There. And then the only thing we have to do is add some gems. And the gems are called Elegant Fauceted Gems. And they were part of the Parisian uh, suite last year, and then they carried them over. So you take your pokey tool and one here and i'm using all three so there's a champagne color there's a clear and there's a white and they really are beautiful there maybe next month they'll be the free thing for placing an order if you use the host code this this month it's the resin hearts let's see if i have any laying around i think i do yeah here so if you place an online order with me this month, you will get a pack of these resin hearts. And, uh, oh, that's so funny, Rhonda. Yeah. Ina, it's nice to see you here. Yes, next time I come to Fergus, I will bring your stamp set. All right, guys, this is it. This is the card. Um, I really love it. I am totally in love with this set. Take a look at the difference. This one is just a little bit brighter than this one. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my video today. I'm really getting excited. It's so nice to actually see some comments here. Um, at first, when I started this, I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't going to fly. It's always a little scary doing a new venture. But um, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you have a super day. Okay. And if you want to share this video, that would make me so happy. Um, yeah, it's just really helps to get the word out. So thanks again and see you next week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye.